This program is brought to you by the friends and partners of Biblical Life TV. Deep waters to nurture and empower the remnant for the last days. There is a power that is about ready to be released from heaven to those that seek after the things of the kingdom of God. When it comes to the word of God, there is a supernatural unction of the Holy Spirit to learn. God is up to something for those that will study to show yourself approved. Right now there's a lot of things in the kingdom that God is trying to establish that goes against people's theology. You need to understand your roots, where you came from. God may require us to change what we're doing to make walking in the kingdom a higher priority than it ever was before. We were never called to have a little light. We were called to be ablaze with the fire of God in this generation. Join the remnant from around the world who are empowered by the Word of God to fulfill God's purpose in these last days. God is speaking something different. That is going to be essential in the days ahead, and that's part of this anointing that we have to have. Prepare yourselves for spirit-filled teaching. Biblical Life TV. In Romans chapter 11, verse 17, and actually I could, I could spend hours teaching Romans chapter 11. There's a lot of things in it. And if some of the branches were broken off, and we've not even defined what that is yet, the Jews that didn't believe in Jesus were broken off. So what does that mean? that means they fell back under the authority of a principality or power. So that we could be grafted in. Thou being a wild olive tree, wert grafted in among them and with them partakers of the root and the fatness of the olive tree. So when I got saved, I was grafted in. God purposely blinded many of them because they, they had already set their hearts they were going to do their own thing. That's why, that's one of the reasons why with Israel there's this dichotomy worldwide of, of perspective. Are they God's chosen people? Yes. Are they really messed up? Yes. Just like America. How many know the deep state has a deep well in Israel the same way the deep state has a deep state in America? Okay? And we've got to separate political Israel from spiritual Israel and what God is doing in the land. We've, we've got to separate that. But there's this anti-Semitism going on that actually violates Romans chapter 11. Because he said, don't be haughty because there are some that have been grafted in. God says, if you get haughty, I'll break you back off. So Israel is being pulled right now. Israel is being pulled two ways. You can see the handprint of a principality and you can see the handprint of God. You see them both because there's this end time struggle because they are God's inheritance and we were grafted into them. In fact, we can see the same dichotomy going on in a lot of what we call Christianity. You can see the hand of a principality in power, that they have the form of godliness but deny the power thereof, and we can see those that are walking with God. Same thing. Am I making sense? And what is the mandate for the believer, New Testament, I do, I do not get haughty against the Jew because God still has a plan for them. And the Apostle Paul says that one day their eyes are going to be opened and all of Israel will be saved. You know what that means? They embrace Messiah. Because right now they have a system that has very little of Moses in it. I pray every day for a revival of Moses in Israel that the heart of every Jew, he would set down every book but the Torah and just let it speak for itself. All these other voices that eventually, within 200 years of Jesus, that became the Talmud. Those voices were clouding the waters back then, and Jesus said, you wouldn't hear Moses, therefore you won't hear me. 
And the only way that they're going to receive Jesus is to return back to the purity of Moses as a people. And once they do, their eyes will be open. They'll see who Jesus really is. And we need to be praying for that. And I'm excited because right now, since Israel became a nation, the number of Jews that have received Messiah are more than from 1948 all the way back to early Book of Acts. There have been more Jews received Messiah than ever before. They're getting grafted back in. What's our mandate? Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And so if we're attacking Jerusalem, we're violating Scripture. We don't understand the whole inner workings of what is going on. And realizing when Messiah comes back, that we're going to all stand before Him and we're going to say, we were a mess, but you had a plan and you redeemed us. And we all bow before you because all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All. I am not anti-Jewish. I am not anti-Israel. But the same anti-Semitism that powered Nazi Germany is raising back up in Europe and it's raising back up in America. And we have many Christian leaders that are connecting with it. God forbid. Let's keep the balance. Now let's look at what the Apostle Paul says here about this grafting in Ephesians chapter 2 starting with verse 11. Wherefore, remember that ye being in past time Gentiles in the flesh, who were also called uncircumcision by that which is called circumcision in the flesh made by hands, at that time you were without Christ, being aliens. We're not talking nanu nanu, aliens from outer space. But it's like it's supposed to be when we have, they call them now undocumented workers. That means they're aliens from the Commonwealth of America. That means they should have no voting rights because they're not a citizen. In time past, I was not, I was not under, I was under a principality and power just like Abram before he heard the voice of God. I was without hope. I was, I was without Christ. And I was separated from the only nation at that time on the planet that was under the direct authority of God. That's what the Apostle Paul is saying here. And strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now, in Christ Jesus, you who were sometimes were afar off. Well, where was I afar off at? In Mystery Babylon. I was far off. Have been made nigh by the blood of Christ. That's why it's the preaching of the kingdom, not just the preaching of salvation. I was taken out to function within something new. For he is our peace who hath made both one and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments, contained in ordinances. And that is, that is in ordinances, this does not say that Jesus destroyed the Torah. The ordinances of temple worship is what he's referring to that kept the Gentiles out. In fact, there was literally, in the days of Jesus, there was literally a wall that was erected that had a sign on it saying, Gentile, if you cross this, this wall, you're dead. Jesus took that down. And there were ordinances in Torah that a Gentile that was, that was uncircumcised in heart, that was under a principality and power, that was unclean because he was under their rulership, was not allowed in the assembly of those called out. Because he hadn't been called out yet. But once we've been called out and we become Hebrews by the blood of Jesus, that ordinance no longer applies because it was crucified in his flesh and that wall no longer exists for us. Is what the Apostle Paul is trying to say here. 
Now when Christ you were sometimes were far off, were made nigh, for he is our peace who hath broke, hath made both one, one new man. And when you look at the words he said here, whose salvation first to? First to the Jew and then to the Gentile. The Gentiles were close, we were far off. But how many know that close really doesn't even make it in hand grenades and atom bombs, okay? You need to be on target. And the only way to be on target in the kingdom now is by the blood of Christ. Said so that it might reconcile both, uh, both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the empty thereby, and came and preached peace to them that are far off and to them that were nigh. For through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. Now therefore you are, you are no more strangers and foreigners. You're no more aliens. Put your antennas down. Your little antennas that, that seek what the principalities and powers and worried about what the culture is doing and what the culture is going to think about me. I'm not to worry about that because I'm of a different nation. The kingdom of God has its own culture and it's dictated by the word of God. And it comes in line with the blood of Jesus. But fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Now Jesus wasn't talking about John, James, Matthew. Those were still being formed. The first prophet was Abraham. Abraham. He walked with God. Who was the first apostle? Moses. Who was sent from the presence of God to deliver a people. Another word for apostle is emissary. He was the emissary of God sent. And we're built upon that foundation. Now who's the chief cornerstone? Who's greater than Abram? Who's greater than Moses? His name is Jesus. Okay? He's the chief cornerstone, which is what the Apostle Paul says right here. Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. That, you know what that means? The New Testament says that Moses was faithful. He was the faithful servant of God. That means Moses lines up perfectly with the cornerstone. So to ridicule Moses is to ridicule the cornerstone. Abram lined up with the cornerstone. Elijah lined up with the cornerstone. Isaiah lined up with the cornerstone. Ezekiel lined up with the cornerstone. Jeremiah lined up with the cornerstone. Oh my. Malachi lined up with the cornerstone. In whom all the building fitteth framed together unto a holy temple. That means under Christ, we're in the same temple. We are a part of the same temple. That there's an unhewn stone there called Abram. There's an unhewn stone there called Moses. All those that filled Abraham's bosom that got emptied out when Jesus resurrected from the dead. They're part of the same body that we're a part of because we were grafted in. And yet we have part of the body that spits on some of the foundational stones and says they're not relevant. Goes against everything that the New Testament says. In whom ye also being builded together for an habitation of God through the Spirit. Now look at Colossians again, Colossians 1.13. Look at what the, what the Apostle Paul says in here, Colossians, for every one of us before we were saved, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness. Before you got saved in America or Europe, or Korea, or China, or wherever you were, you were a citizen of darkness under the power of darkness. Every single one. When we heard the gospel, 
The Apostle Paul says, has translated us. Beam me up, Scotty. We were translated. We were here, but when we bowed the knee to Jesus and surrendered completely to Him, we blinked out of existence under the authority of that principality and power, and we reappeared under the authority of Jesus of Nazareth, our only King. Who is the King of the Jews? Who is the one who dictated the commandments to Moses? Who is the one who called Abram out of Babylon? Who is the one who sent Moses? Who is the one who powered Elijah? Who is the one? We serve Him. Now let's go back to Ephesians chapter 6. This is going to take at least two sessions to go through. This is okay. For we wrestle, for we wrestle, for we wrestle, for we wrestle, not with flesh and blood. Wrestling, this word in, in, the, in the Greek, palai, means that it literally the contest between two wrestlers. And if you've ever seen how like the ancient Greeks or the ancient Romans would wrestle, it's this constant conflict of trying to pin the opponent, and it's always going on. You have your hands on them, they have their hands on you. And, it's a, and what you do is you may tense up for a moment, you may relax for a moment, waiting for your opponent to relax. And so there's this constant struggle because with the preaching of the gospel, as the kingdom begins to expand, because it's not legislated, that's one of the things that at least the founding fathers in America knew. You cannot legislate morality and a clean heart. You cannot legislate a good heart. That's why you can have a million laws on the books forbidden guns, and men will get guns anyway. They'll pick up rocks. They'll find knives. They'll, uh, right now where there's no guns are allowed at all in the UK, except for the police, their biggest problems are knives and acid. Because dark hearts will do dark things, no matter what law is on the book. The only ones that ever obey laws are called law-abiding citizens. The moment you're a criminal, that means you get care less about what the law means, okay? And they understood that. That's why they said that as long as we were a moral people, the, the regulations and the laws of the federal government had to be very small because we self-governed. Our conscience being Christians, regardless of what the Masons had in mind and everything else, they have to understand this. And if they understand even their own writings, they understand this. They counted on the morality of the Christian church, and even the Masons themselves never thought of America ever being anything but a nation whose majority were Christian. And they set their republic on the top of the foundation of those walking in another kingdom. Now that that is beginning to wane out of society, how many millions of laws are on the books now? That's one of the things I heard Roger Stone say uh, about this Mueller investigation. He is, he's unfettered. He can, he can, if he investigates you, he can investigate you ad nauseum about anything, okay? There are so many laws and regulations on the book that a law-abiding citizen in America violates at least four of them a day and doesn't even know it because sometimes they contradict each other. Okay? That's one of the reasons within the Roman mind that law was bad that we have kind of extrapolated into what we see in the New Testament. And the I mean, oh, law of God is good. Law of man is bad. One oppresses one shows you how to walk in freedom. Once you get free in Jesus, how do you walk in it? How do you make sure that you're not still walking according to the course of the power of the air, the prince of the power of the air, and their ways of doing things? So there's this wrestling going on. We wrestle with culture, and we wrestle with systems that were established by principalities and powers within the nations that they control, Christianity is not to be influenced by culture. 
And right now, most of Christianity is more affected by culture than it is the Word of God. And because of that, we have lost our savor and, and a save, a savor, okay? Not savior, savor, but you can go so far the other way, you can lose save, savior too, okay? We, Jesus said, if you have lost salt, if you have lost your savor, you will be trampled under the feet of the Gentiles that are under the authority of principalities and powers. And if that isn't happening in the church in America, I don't know what is. The only way to change that is to get salty once again. I am not to be a part of the American culture. I am the preservative that keeps the American culture from getting rancid by being salt and light and to bring them back to something that isn't going to destroy itself. That's why, and I know Trump has his purpose, and it's that purpose will flow as long as he stays true to what God's telling him to do and as we do our part. But the answer for America is, number one, Jesus and when Christians will start being Christians again and start wrestling instead of petting the thing on the top of the head that you're supposed to be wrestling with. We have, we have, we have called a truce and we now feed the principalities and powers and we placate them instead of wrestling with them, wrestling men's lives out of their hands. That's our job. And we have forsaken it for ease and comfort and prosperity of Laodicea. We've got to make the difference. It's an absolute surrender to Jesus and a re-examination of everything that we believe, everything that we participate in. Does it line up with this? If it doesn't line up with this in the kingdom of God, I've got to set it aside. I've got to change and I've got to be established in the ways of God. I've got to know that every day when the moment that I leave my house, I am wrestling. Do I push the influence of that principality and power back from me? We ought to learn to be able to live a life that there's literally a sphere of the kingdom of God around us. Just like with Peter, if you could get close enough that you came within the range of his shadow, that's how far the kingdom manifested around him when he was just walking normally day to day, not ministering, just walking. And if you could get close enough to get to that shadow, kingdom of God would back off what that principality or power put on you to bring you under control. Does that make sense? That's what we're to walk in. So to do that takes the armor of God. Not just, it's not just fighting demons is fighting something greater. Now, we're not to go up into the second heaven. We're going to get into that in the next section. That's something God does. We see it in the book of Daniel. Nothing Jesus did change that. I mean, and we, we have Christians that are astro projecting into the second heaven trying to war against principalities and powers. They may think that they're getting away with it long enough to teach other Christians to do it, but that is out of order. It is not scriptural. That is something that God does. In fact, in this area... There have been congregations that did spiritual mapping and thought they had the ability to go against principalities and powers directly. Many of those pastors died and those congregations no longer existed because you were not authorized to do that level of spiritual warfare. That's why we can come before the throne of grace to receive help in a time of need. We go to our Father and say, we need heavenly reinforcements. Please send warring spirits to war with us. As we, do, as we mess with the ground war, we need air support. And let the jet pilots be the jet pilots and let the ground soldiers be the ground soldiers. We each have our place and when we find that place and begin moving with it, we begin finding the anointing. But we have let them so change the culture right now we're living under a heaven of brass. I just did an interview with Mike Spaulding and L.A. Marzulli and he brought up a number I didn't know it was that high. Since Roe versus Wade, there has been one billion abortions worldwide with a B. Every one of them was a blood sacrifice that created a, bra a, a heaven of brass. And we have so come under the influence of principalities and powers, the miracles are harder to see happen. 
answer prayers can be harder to see happen except for the remnant that are waking up and they're returning and they're, they're wrestling themselves out of. Let me tell you something. When God wakes you up as remnant, you're going to have to wrestle to get the tentacles of that principality and power out of your life and return back to the Word of God. There is a wrestling involved. And if he can't get you off to reject it, he'll get you off into legalism or anything else he can except the purity of the Word. And Jesus and Moses are in harmony with one another. And you want to see how to walk Moses? You read the Gospels. Jesus is the law and the commandments in motion, in absolute perfection as empowered and guided by the Holy Spirit. And he's our example. That's our calling in this day. That's our calling in this hour. Today we wrestle because I don't want to be a lackey to a principality and power that's at war with God. Because he's going to be judged and whoever you're under the authority of, when they're judged, all those in authority underneath them are judged with them. If I'm in Christ, he bore my judgment on the cross so I've already been judged. And because he resurrected, I'm now judged righteous in him. See, I've already, he has borne my judgment. I'm set free. If I'm not underneath him, then the wrath of God is coming for those that aren't under the blood of Jesus and under his leadership, his kingdom, his power, his authority, walking in his ways. That's how, that's how if, if America is going to be saved... It's going to be a revival among God's people, realizing the war that we're in, the dynamics of it, and functioning as true citizens of the kingdom of God and part of the commonwealth of Israel. Now, Father, I ask that you would continue to open our eyes, Father. Father, give us the strength to wrestle, to be set free. Father, let's love you more than the world. The world, the flesh, and the devil are our greatest problems. But Jesus, the Word of God, the Holy Spirit, the blood of Jesus are our watchwords and our empowerment to walk in the things of God. And Father, we thank you and we praise you for it. In Jesus' name. Thank you for watching Biblical Life TV. We hope and pray that today's program edified you in the Word of God. Stay informed. Tune in to weekly podcasts by Dr. Michael and Mary Lou Lake to keep you informed, inspired, and empowered in the kingdom of God. Tune in to www.kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. That's kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. This video was made possible by our partners worldwide. Please prayerfully consider supporting the ministry that is preparing the remnant for the unfolding of end times prophecy. Send your offerings to Biblical Life, P.O. Box 160, Seymour, Missouri. That's Biblical Life, P.O. Box 160, Seymour, Missouri, 65746-0160. You can also donate online at store.biblical-life.com. That's store.biblical-life.com.